Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited to be joined by Ana de la Reguera, who's currently starring in Army of the Dead. And I wanted to begin by talking a little bit about your character development process and working with Zack Snyder on that, because it sounds like as a director, he gives a lot of autonomy and a lot of freedom in terms of the choices that you're able to bring to the table. Um, and so what are some of the spaces and aspects of your character you felt really came from the freedom that he offers? Um, you know, a lot of them were from everything. It just even if the, the way you move on set, like it's really free. Like he, he never tells you you have to walk from here to here, or you have to move from there, or you have to. He just follows you the whole time, and so that that was new for me. You know, like just someone who follows you, not you, you, you follow him, or um, he's just looking at what's interesting, what you're doing. And um, so that's why you, you try to bring new things every day and, and also suggest things to him. And he loves that. He loves collaboration. And also like, you don't, you don't feel like you're working, you know, oh, he's the director and I know he's the boss and I have to, you know, follow his rules. He just wants you there. He's one of you, you know, he's one of us. He's one. And definitely he's a great team player. Um, and that's what I loved and that's, one of the things that I learned the most from him. And when we meet your character at the beginning of the film, she is running a car shop at the time, mm -hmm. working with but she has this extensive history and she's been to war with zombies previously. Um, and has that great relationship with Dave Bautista's character, Scott. And so when he first shows up and the two of you have that scene together, what were you thinking of in terms of building out their history together, the time that they've spent, you know, in these types of situations that would inform who she is at that present moment? You know what, that was the first scene we shot, which was like crazy because that was the first day I met, well, I met Seth before once when we did the screen test and then, um, that's when I met him the second time. So I was super nervous and excited. And that's when I met Dave. And exactly what you said, in one scene, we had to capture that we have a history together. And it's a scene that it lasts by, you just say hello. So actually I remember that I, I improvised that part where I'm like looking seriously at him and then I break and I go and, and, and hug him. That was an improvisation because it was like, how do we make this not to be the classic meet you know of like oh how are you it's been so long you know like you just want to see in one second the uh the type of characters they are their relationship or how you know how how you can see that like they haven't seen each other in a while but at the same time that they adore each other so so that was like a choice that i just made in that moment like i i remember that in an acting class actually <laughs> when um when a teacher told us like all those are it's not only acting it's all the choices you make and um so that was mine at that moment and i think it worked very well and it sounds so great that you had the opportunity to film that scene at the beginning and then followed by that, the rest of the scenes where the two of them are going to the rest of the crew and seeing if they're in for the job, because you get those one on one moments almost to really capture the individual relationships before you go into the group ensemble. Mm -hmm. so that a really useful amount, you know, time for you in shooting those scenes right at the beginning before you went into the rest of the heavier stuff. Yes, we did that actually, because when we were finishing those scenes, when we were shooting those scenes at the end of the day, they would take us to the training camp and, um, you know, be, being trained uh, as a group uh, to be able, you know, to know how to kill zombies. So that's why we started with those scenes, which was a lot because it was like the beginning and they're like the most important scenes because, you know, action scenes are important and are very demanding, but um there, I think they are less complicated. I would have loved to start with action scenes and then going with the other scenes because you have more time to think and to meet the people and to see, you know, and to talk about it. But no, we started with the difficult ones and then we went to the action. Uh, so that was the way we shot it and uh, it was good. But, it, you know, for me, at the, that was good too at, at some point because I did shot all the sequence where, you know, I get to meet Dave and then he, he brings me in just to, you know, to recruit Omari, to recruit everyone. We shot that kind of like the first two weeks 
So that was good. And you just mentioned some of the training that you did for the action sequences, and that was very heavily involved Navy SEAL training that you were doing. Mm -hmm. What were the things that you really took away from that experience and that training, Mm -hmm. not just in terms of how to move in the action sequences, but really thinking about the mindset, the psychological aspect, and then also the camaraderie and trust that this group has to have in order to operate together? You know what? At the beginning, I wasn't crazy about having to be trained and having to go and, and um, you know, just be with real guns. And because sometimes the fascination around guns in this country makes me a little bit uncomfortable. So I also didn't want to like go there. But uh, I was talking to one of my friends, kind of one of the actors and said, well, just don't think about that. It's like you're having an opportunity to maybe at some point in life be able to defend yourself or to, it's just knowledge and it's always welcome, you know? So I said, okay. And then when I trained, I had so much respect for the machines, the weapons, like um, it, it was fundamental to be able to train and to see these guys, how much respect do they have for the guns and and how to behave around them. You know, you cannot just leave the, the gun. At the beginning, the first days, um, we would just like leave our gun in the wall, like, you know, against the wall. Even if it wasn't a real gun, we wouldn't do that because they didn't let, let us do it because the gun is, is even, if it's, even if it's fake or not, you know, it's something that you, you have to take very serious. And um, so it was also part of the training that you have to, every time you finish a scene, you have to give it to them. You cannot just leave the gun in the chair and you're waiting, you know, you, you couldn't, they were there. You will, you know, give them or all your weapons and um, to the person who, who was in charge of them, it was like almost like someone in charge of each character's weapon. So, um, it was very interesting and, and to watch, but I did have a lot of respect for them after, and uh, and it, it really helped me to, to just just all the um um how do you say that? Como all the responsibility you, that you carry in your hands is you can kill someone. And your character, interestingly, also seems to be someone who's quite excited by the adrenaline and feels very comfortable leaning into it. You know, there's that yeah. great, there's that moment that's very telling when they open all of the weapons that they're going to go to Vegas with, and your character is almost laughing with delight at that point. Yes, she's super excited. <laughs> how how <laughs> want to shape that side of her and the excitement that she feels in going into really dangerous situations because she knows exactly what she's stepping into. Yeah, but I think she's more than excited than going and kill, like in, in killing people or the weapons. She's excited about like saving lives. She's as excited about doing something relevant with her life, something important, um, feeling that she, her life has is meaningful, you know? So that's why I think she's so excited because I think she feels like a zombie uh, when she's not she's not helping people. And I think all of them do. I think Van der Ho and, and, and Scott you know, the, the characters, they, they feel the same way. Um, so that's why I feel she's super excited to go back to the field and, and, um, and to risk everything, you know? And with having gone into the field as well, you know, she would come out of that experience with a certain emotional fabric to her and, you know, maybe a little bit of trauma and there's lots of different impacts that that would have. What were some of the details that you built into her based on knowing she has this experience and this is how I think it would have affected her? I, I feel like they're very trained and prepared and they're not afraid of the zombies. They know how, how to kill them. But I think she wasn't, I think anyone was prepared to see what they're seeing, you know, like they get into the they get into Las Vegas and then they realize these zombies are not like the last ones. They're completely different, and they just have to, you know, trust. It's just everything is about trust and about the stick is staying together. Scott repeats that many times, especially to her to his daughter, <laughs> and she doesn't have, she doesn't uh, she doesn't follow the rules. But you have to follow the rules. That's why there's a leader. That's why you have to follow the people. That's why you you cover each other. Like that's the only way you're organizing. Like they are. Like if they are organized as zombies, we have to be organized as humans. 
So we have to follow rules. And that's the only way we, you can be successful. So she knows how to do that. And then she feels super comfortable about it. But um, but everything, nothing works like, like it was supposed to. Right, and exactly. You mentioned that they're very different zombies. And the whole thing is that they actually move much faster. They're more nimble. And, you know, they're more strategic as well. And when you were, would be blocking out a lot of the action sequences and those interactions with them, you know, I imagine that was a really interesting experience because you still have to move very quickly, but then thinking about how they would be moving as a scene partner as well with all of the performers playing them. How did that craft into a lot of the choreography for the action sequences? Oh, well, we, you know, we had a great stunt and, um, and also, you know, Zach is a master with the camera. Like she made it, she makes it look like it's even more exciting than it really was, <laughs> you know, because you shoot a lot of like little pieces and also, uh, but at the same time, like we had like a lot of zombies and then they would do all their work for you because they would go like, and then they would do the work of like exploding or falling down or the gun would do it or then after the special effects. So, but you did, we did. I felt, I felt like a little kid, like there were certain moments when we were like in this whole, you know, big, big, um, big set with so many extras dressed like zombies and explosions happening. And I was, you know, I was in heaven, to be honest. I was like, oh my God, I have to run, I have to, like, it was, it was cool. <laughs> I felt, I felt like a action hero. <laughs> Down to lunch with hundreds of zombies must have been an interesting experience as well. <laughs> Yeah, well, we didn't have too many lunch because actually we didn't break for lunch, which was like horrible for me because I loved like to eat because we were shooting with, with, with natural light. So we were, you know, while we were waiting, we were eating. So we wouldn't cut for lunch, but we were, you were eating with your zombie partner. Like, you know, like we were there, all of us together. So we were like, hey, how are you? How's this your day? Sorry that I killed you today. Oh my God, I'm so like, I feel so bad. And then the next day, they would come back dressed as a different zombie and you had to kill them again. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and the look really amazing. And the, the way that, that they've built that entire production set for the Las Vegas Strip. And when you look around the level of detail, you know, there's burned out cars, yes. old, you know, there's dead bodies and some are older than others. So you can see what, you know, the trajectory of yeah. the How, You know, was that really helpful to you having so much extensive detail and immersion mm. in yeah, it was because you just just didn't you didn't have to act, you know? Like it, it made us it made our life easier. And also Zach's life because he could turn around and look everywhere. He can go 360 and everything was ready to be to be shooting. Like, you know, because he would follow you. You were it was not like, oh, we can only see this side. We cannot see this side. Like you could see everything. So the set was incredible. So that was that was that was pretty cool that um, that we didn't have to imagine a lot of things that were just there. Um, and, and actually it was fun. Like sometimes I was more, I was super distracted about that because I was like, I was trying to be like, you know, um, focus on killing someone. And then I was like, oh my God, I love that costume like that. Like, you know, the the, the costume is super cool. And then like, oh, oh my God, like she's a clown. Oh my God, this guy, like she's a prostitute. Like, you know, it was super fun to watch. <laughs> with the way that you describe Zach following you with the camera, is there less specific blocking in scenes and working with him because he's just allowing the performance to dictate the camera motion? Mm. Yeah, he gave us obviously like, oh, you guys are going to come from here to there. But yeah, we could have. And also at some point, I think we all kind of had our places because, you know, I was one of the shorter, I'm, I'm, I'm the sh probably one of the shorter one in, in the group. So I was most of the time in the front because then Dave could be in the back, you know, behind me because he's way taller than me. So we kind of like all started to, and then Ella would be always in the middle because we were covering her because she didn't have like just like one little gun. So we kind of like all naturally started to know where our places were. And um, so that was, that became easier and easier. And, and yeah, Zach will just follow us sometimes and, and if we look there, it was a lot of improvisation. He's like, yeah, you could kill this zombie, you could kill this zombie. But like in the meantime, you would go like, 
go there and then you could go, you know, turn back down and then go up and he will just follow you. And yeah. feel thinking about the fact that Ella's there and like you said, you're all protecting her. Dave's mm-hmm. essentially playing the character who's the leader of the group. Mm-hmm. There's specific group dynamics with every single interaction, the way that you guys communicate, like, you know, even just the way that you will move together, like you just said. Um, and so how did you all work to build out and figure out, not just thinking of it in terms of a hierarchy, but into individual interpersonal relationships and then the dynamic that they have together as a group in those sorts of scenarios? Yeah, we were a lot uh, together as a group so, and we, we trained for that. We did. Uh, we actually did like a lot of um, exercises, a group exercises that were fun, like competitions and there were exercises where I won one. Actually, I won the one who you have who would, you know, um, pull his gun faster, you know, pull out his, like, so I won that one. And then we'll be like, one, two, three, the one who can, you know, be ready faster so um then they would they would be like eliminating us or then they would actually build this kind of sets in, in in on the on the um, on the stage they would build these sets were like out of um out of nothing boxes and and then the stunt guys and also the guys who were training us would be like okay so it's like they were like labyrinths right and they were like windows and they were like fake walls and that. So you guys have to go in there as a group. You know, they would train us before, they would teach us how to do it. And then they were like, you guys go. And they would be like, oh, you will be dead. And someone will come out of here. You have to cover that window. Like they will give us like all this, like if you were like in a video game, really. So um, that's how they train us. And that's how we were able to be able to improvise because we know all the rules like, oh, if you are like gonna pass next to a window, you first look, you know, or if you're gonna open a, a door, who opens the door, who stays there, who covers this angle? Like you have to cover all the angles. So all that we we had a training for it, and it was a lot of fun. There's also very individualized combat styles that they all have as well to match their yeah. person. What did you feel were the unique aspects of of Maria's combat styles for you? What do we combat styles? What do we come? In terms of like how they fight in in battle and the fact that they all move, you know, move and battle a little bit differently when they're fighting zombies. Yeah, um, I think just I think my character is just comfortable. She's done it. Like I just I just want her to feel like that's something that it really stuck in my mind. Is like at the beginning, one of the first days actually that we were with the guns, and then actually they throw us. We had actually one rehearsal. I don't remember it was before shooting on the big strip, right? And because we were doing that on big and smaller stage. So now it's like the huge one. How do you cover that one, right? And uh, so I remember that we were all like with the guns, like trying to look super cool and intense because we were holding a gun. And then the guys were like, no, you're just standing there. This is like a second arm, but you're just there. You're not thinking that you have a gun, right? Like, because we were all like, dun, dun. Like, and then like they were like, look at us, we're just here, we're just holding on, we kill the zombie, and then you keep walking, like it has to be natural, you know? So that stuck into my mind a lot, and I'm just thinking that, yeah, like, you know, it's not a big deal for that's her job. Like a lot of people ask me, like, oh, what do you feel like being an actress? Like, I don't get into the set thinking, I'm an actress, you know? Like you're just thinking about what do you want for breakfast, or oh my god, I have to learn my scenes, but you're not thinking. Like people feel like, oh with the sunglasses and, you know, the high heels or whatever, or the makeup, you're just feeling like, oh, I'm tired. I walk, you know, I woke up at 5 a.m. So the same thing here, like, it's just the gun is there. And if you see a zombie, you kill him and you keep walking. It's just like a, something that is, is normal for you, you know? I wanted to ask you about um, your character's costumes as well, because there's so, so many great details and, you know, even down to having bite marks from previous encounters with zombies to show how close she's gotten and yeah. some of the other details that you found in terms of her costume or some of the accessories that she had that helped you find her as a character. Yeah, that, 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 those kind of details were key, you know, because actually I didn't, saw them until like, I don't know, like maybe the second time that we were, we tried our, our custom, we're like, what is this? Like, oh yeah, she's like, it's a zombie. I'm like, oh my God, because you are like, you are, you are, you are dressed with the old gear, you know? And I'm like, 
oh my god that's true so this is our like you know um something that you use and i'm like this is insane like every single little like it's so sad that people cannot really look at it in detail but yeah everything was very well thought you know which shoes they were using um you know, all the things that i have because we have the tanks and i have like the big gun and i have another one in my in my leg just in case you know this one i never had to use it actually i don't remember but i think i never had to use it but you know we were the ones who were carrying more, most of the most of the gear right and um yeah what else uh, well I, we, we had the things to you know the the speak uh, how do you call them like these ones oh like an earpiece and we had the earpiece here i had an earpiece here the whole time i have like a little necklace that you know it's something personal um and um what else do we have yeah i think just just you know comfortable and comfortable clothing <laughs> that you can be there for for many days without showering <laughs> the dusty desert scene <laughs> yes exactly I also really love the the comedy in the film as well and thought that mm. was a aspect of it was that something where you ha you thought consciously about some of the comedic moments or the comedic delivery, or was it just a very natural aspect because of the way that it was written into the scripts? Um, I it, what, what, there was a lot of there was comedy in the script and there was comedy that a lot of the actors brought. I I think my character was more of like just more of like a sentimental character more than the comedian you know character, and because uh, I don't think. I love comedy and I do a lot of comedy, but I don't, I feel for the comedy to be, to work, not everyone has to be funny, you know, not every single character needs to be funny. So that's, that's when those moments pop because if everyone, it's the funny one, then it's, then it, then it, it's, it was just for me to work like, I don't have to be the funny one. It's the funny one is the other person and I'm here to help that, you know? Um, so yeah, but I, I was aware, we were aware that it had a uh, very um, comic reliefs, you know, and 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 because there's a lot of tension during the during also the, the shoot, so and during the story, so you we you, you need that as a, as a as with the story, the story needs it and the audience needs it. And one of one of those places of te where the tension comes from is the way that they have to move so slowly and so quietly and so calmly around these huge hordes of zombies, even having them right up pressing up against you. And what did Zach decide the hairline trigger of you can move like this, but if you do this, it's going to trigger them, it's going to wake them up and they're going to come for you because it feels like there were definite rules about, you know, when it's going to be yeah. Yeah, it was the, um, the light on the eyes. A lot of the times we could not, like, you know, um, point them with light, with, with light to the zombie. So we, and we have to obviously don't wake him up, be very careful, um, di di distract them with, someone, uh, with something else so you can run for your life. Um, so yeah, there were a lot of like, and also depending on the zombie, no? Like there were zombies that you we know you can get killed. Like you can even wait until he's here and kill them, kill him, and it's not nothing's gonna happen. And there were zombies that will kill you in a second. So we find out there when until we get there. So we have to switch our minds like right away. <laughs> And you've also been working on the animated prequel series for this as well. And what's that experience been? Because it's very unique to take a character that you've played on screen and then to play an animated version of themselves at a different point in time as well. And so how were you thinking about the character in a lot of the same ways, but also using very different skill sets in order to portray her? Um, I, I loved doing the animated because you will learn so much about Cruz when you see when you see the animated film, like all the the backstory with, between her and Scott. It's super cool, and um, yeah, I, I was just very happy that after I shot the movie and while we were doing the movie, actually they showed me a little bit of so, some images for the for the animated series, and uh, it looks 
he looks amazing. So I am excited for the audience to see that after the movie. And then I think they, when they see the animated film, they will get a lot of things will make more sense also that they are there, but you can see it that much because you don't know a lot of the backstory yet. I can't wait to watch them as com companion pieces. Yes. From the experience of making Army of the Dead, what's the biggest thing that you feel like you had the opportunity to learn that was very unique to this project for you? Um, I think for me, it was more, I learned a lot about, about uh, from Zach, to be honest. I learned how he handled all the pressure. <laughs> You know, I think that's 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 always something that it is important if you want to be a creator, if you want to be a leader in whatever you do, you know, and it helps for anything in life. You know, if it's just just to be just just that everything was about collaborating and being happy and being ex in the excited about what he was doing and believing in what he was doing um, and not feel that pressure and just enjoy it. I think he was really enjoying the process, the moment, having that opportunity that Netflix was trusting him with a lot of money, but also with, with, with his ideas. And, um, and I feel like if you enjoy something so much, it will translate. And I think that's why he has this, very close and deep connection with his fans, you know, because he really cares. I also feel like in watching the film, the enjoyment of, of your experience on the set really translates into the character as well. So congratulations to everything with the film. And thank you so much, Anna. Thank you, Mara. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you.